Hello. If you're looking for deep truths and authenticity in a world that feels more and more artificial every day, you've come to the right place. If you're in need of a breath of fresh air, welcome. I'm Regan. I'm Bianca, and this is a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Do you want to tell them what we're diving into today, Regan, or should I? Sure. We're diving into the shadow and, you know, learning to embrace the shadow, you know, as we continue on this journey in a way that is truly for our greatest and highest good, would you say? That is a yeah. good description. <laughs> very, very to the point, succinct. I mean, honestly, we, you said that so well. What else could we say? I think that's it. We have a one minute podcast episode this, <laughs> this time around. <laughs> no, yeah, I think we were just kind of riffing off each other and talking before and just thinking about how this journey is like time travel in a way and there's moments where like you're in the sun and you're like oh man this feels great I feel the sun beaming on me and then sometimes you're like it feels like when you're driving under that overpass and like it's shadowy and dark and you know it can feel a little bit jarring that contrast um I don't know if that brings anything up for you yeah it's this you know, process we're continuing to go through of, I think the best analogy for it is like, you know, we're, we're, we're here, we're in this earth, we're in this experience and the lights have been off. And now like the light is being slowly turned on and, you know, that's beautiful. That's more light, but it's also creating this, you know, experience where all these hidden things or all these shadows, all these, you know, patterns or behaviors or relationships like all these types of things are all like it's like we can see them now more and more and so you know it brings up it brings up a lot you know that's like I think a lot that it starts to bring up a lot of emotions uh, or the thoughts like we talked about last week um of the experience so I feel like it's really important to continue to kind of observe that and you know just kind of through our hearts be able to to navigate that because it gets really it can get really you know challenging and tricky and hard at times yeah sometimes for me it's just sometimes I have a hard time accepting that part of myself like I'm like oh man (laughs) like I have I have parts of myself where I can be cold and harsh I have parts of myself that can just like shut down and like get in my own world and just kind of like you know not how I am most of the time but it is a it is there (laughs) and so sometimes the, the hard thing is just like getting in and getting out because it's like you don't want to get roped into it and like sucked into your shadow but you also don't want to you know judge it and shame it yeah because it tends to be you know it's a funny paradox not so funny when you're in it but like the more you try to avoid your shadow the more it'll just start like showing up like crazy (laughs) so you kind of need to have that balance of like it's really like having that relationship with it I think and learning to have like a really loving and compassionate relationship with it but also realize that um you know just I think seeing it for what it is you know is what it's that part of yourself that uh you know is expressing itself in a certain way for some reason maybe trauma or programming or conditioning or whatever it may be learning to see it with like a love and acceptance and working with it, you know, I actually talk to it. Like I actually have like an inner dialogue with it. To me, that's the best thing to kind of get on the same page with it instead of like this unconscious process where it's coming up, fears coming up, anxiety or anger or whatever, or just like disappointment, whatever it is coming up and then trying to either avoid it or escape it or like, like this is wrong. I shouldn't be feeling this. This is bad. I'm bad. That whole loop, which is such a, Oh, that's such a a hard one that I think many of us find ourselves in at times. Yeah, like having a conversation with it, like, what are you trying to tell me kind of thing? Yeah, and I like to write it down. Like, for me, that's the best is, like, I write it down. It's, like, for me, it feels like, um, you know, it's actually called parts work. That's what, you know, it's, like, a thing in psychology. But for me, it's usually, like, my higher self and my ego or my inner child literally it's amazing what you can work out too it's like oh well I feel this because this and just being like 
I understand. I'm here for you. You know, we're in this together. You're not alone. And it just creates this kind of more harmony with these mm. different aspects of ourselves. You know, we are truly like little micro universes. Yeah. You're talking about like internal family systems, right? IFS is what they call it. Or is it something else? Um, it's something else. Wow. It's like a... There's... Go ahead. I think that's just what people call it. Parts work. Um, that's just one name for it. It's just like a, a way of, I guess, healing or maybe it's a more psychological modality. But yeah, it's just when you like, you have maybe if there's parts of you that are in conflict, one part wants this and one part wants that. And it feels like this, like, in this um, affliction, this conflict within yourself, you can actually kind of, you know, take a moment to breathe and relax and go within and then start to allow these different parts of yourself to basically communicate and get on the same page it sounds like crazy and quantum but it really does work no i've heard of something similar i haven't heard of it in that way but i've i've heard it in um there was this there's this book called your body keeps the score which is a pretty you know popular book about uh ptsd and um there's a more, maybe more modern take and they call it internal family systems where there's this idea of protector parts that you oh. developed when you were a child. And um, it's like, I think it's very similar. So it could be like an extension of like what you're talking about. So it made me think of that. So it's like these parts of us that are like trying to keep us safe because maybe when we were kids or when we were younger, you know, like they were like, oh, well, I can't share my opinion because if I share my opinion, people will judge me. And so then we are adults and we still carry that protector part that like when we are wanting to speak up, there's that resistance and that tension because those parts haven't necessarily evolved at the same rate that we have. And I think there is an interesting like like way to like tie it all together to the shadow and stuff like that. It doesn't map exactly, but you know, just like how you're, you said, I like how you say that like we're all like mini universes. You know, maybe our shadows are just as complex where it's like we call it the shadow, but maybe it has all these these elements to it. And like, you know, maybe that's part of embracing it. Yeah. And in hearing you describe it, maybe it is part of that. And I'm just not familiar with that because it seems like that is a very similar thing. But um, yeah, and, and, and it's like it's almost... I think it is unavoidable. But the thing about the shadow, too, that we tend to forget, especially when we're in it, when we're not in it, we can see it so clearly. But when it's actually like arising in, within us, I feel like we can forget so easily that um, the shadow isn't just an obstacle. It, it, it really it really tends to be the the seeing of it and the observing of it and like, you know, the transmutation and the expansion that happens from working with your shadow that can that is usually the most uh, empowering. You know, that's when the most empowering. That's when a lot of our soul's blueprint actually, I think, is activated. You know, by us overcoming. I don't know if overcoming is the right word, but you know, um, going through these processes. You know, when even when they are, especially when they're uncomfortable and intense. You know, just being able to, like we said last time, see the madness through. You know, and. There's a really, really good thing I've, I've been hearing lately going around of like healing isn't about having a perfect, being a perfect version of yourself. It's about loving yourself as you are now with all of your flaws or things that you think is wrong with you. Like that is true healing is accepting that because that just creates a way more, I think, harmonious field to bloom in, you know. That's such a beautiful way of saying it, a more harmonious field to bloom in. I love that. <laughs> it just came to just me. like <laughs> casually writing poetry in the middle of the podcast no, you know, like it's fine um no I love that and it it also makes me think of a Carl Jung quote you say a lot which is not it's slipping my mind but the one about you'll you'll find what you're looking for where you do you know what I'm talking about yeah what you need the most is where you least want to look yeah it makes me think of that you know that that idea and that concept, but I love what you shared too about, yeah, healing is not like when I get to this mile marker, then I love myself because that's a way that we put conditions on our love again, but real love is unconditional. You know, it's like that acceptance and that, you know, 
that embrace, like just being like as you are, which I feel like can feel easier for other people. <laughs> Like with someone else, I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine. I mean, everybody has their quirks, but then like with me, I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> What's going on with me? Yeah, it's so tricky. You know, it's so tricky with that, and it can be so automatic. I think that's the hard thing about it. Sometimes it's like you know, to quote Carl Jung again, you know, that's something he always talked about is like making the unconscious conscious, and I think that really is you know a good way to just explain the awakening process is you know we have all these you know personally and collectively we have like all this i mean infinite unconscious like material or experiences um you know and 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 again as that light comes on as we start to see it as we continue to kind of open our hearts open our minds you know and evolve we're able to kind of see more we're able to like um perceive more and contain more and realize like more of what's going on and it's such a blessing but i and not but but it's such a blessing and um you know it's it's just that evolution of consciousness that there's times where it's it's inherently kind of uncomfortable because you're evolving you know you're actually becoming like more so it's like there's that natural process of kind of like having to undergo that transformation yeah that was so good it just made my mind went blank (laughs) yeah it's like it's like accepting and reducing that resistance towards something that's part of the process just like last time you know as you referenced already seeing the madness through and you know, it made me think back to that, the image that came in my mind um, of like traveling along this road. And it's like, it's not about, you know, that's a whole other point. It's not necessarily about the destination going to, but the experience of it, right? Like the evolution itself is, is like the bulk of it. And you can't get to the other side of that overpass without going through it or experiencing it. It's just part of it. But I think it's so easy to get caught up as if it's like something that's not supposed to happen when it's like kind of orchestrated all along, like it's supposed to, (laughs) but all along that's what was supposed to happen. But in the moment, I think it can just feel so overwhelming. Do you have any like things that you fall back on in those moments to like keep yourself grounded? Yeah, such an amazing question. I think the biggest thing is for me is lately I don't think you can get any more simple than this it's like just doing your best to come back to the very present moment because a lot of times when that arises it's like we automatically either go to the past something that happened and thinking it's going to happen again or going into the future you know of like oh my god that anxiety of what will happen you know where we don't really have any control over that anyways coming back to the present moment and being And remembering that, you know, you're experiencing all these things, these thoughts, these events, these happenings, these thoughts, but none of it is like really you, you know, like none of it is you. It's just you having this experience. And for me, I think that is at the core of it, the best thing to come back to because you know, it's just this, this, I don't know what else to say other than how intense it can be at times, you know, where it, I feel like you just have to come back to, for me at least, come back to the present moment. And then you can do other things in that, you know, like maybe dancing or writing or journaling or, you know, you will know in your heart, like, what can I do right now to maybe help myself kind of regulate this sea, you know, how it feels. It can feel like a tsunami sometimes of energy going on within. And um, I think that's the biggest thing is like really kind of flowing with that water. You know, sometimes it is the lazy river ride. Sometimes it is like a tsunami, but it's like the more you can really just kind of allow and flow with it in the present moment. And again, be mindful of your thoughts and just try to observe them I think that's when you can kind of continue no matter how intense it is because you will move through it it's always temporary you'll move through that 
energy and then again like the less the the realizations the lessons or the integration like all of it it's just such a natural process yeah it's such a like a great way to cut straight to it like to the root of it like the being present part and i think that's the amazing thing of this is an amazing thing is like, it sounds so simple, but it's actually like transmuting. It's like the process of transmutation, which is incredibly powerful and profound. Like something as simple as like sitting with yourself and being present is just actually such a powerful transformative thing to do. And it sounds like, I think it's, that's why it's easy sometimes to like downplay those things because it sounds simple, but like, it's really uh, probably more profound than we can actually fathom. Yeah, definitely. You know, and it's like we kind of talked about before we um, started recording, like this constant sort of like death and rebirth too, as well, that goes hand in hand with any transformation and evolution. You know, it's like I can, you know, speak from my own experience where I've had moments where, um, you know, people call it ego death. You can call it whatever you want. It's that's symbolic, but it really is like that. And I have had moments you know, for example, with, with the plant medicine, with ayahuasca, where I got to see it very clearly and intensely where like my ego, I got it, which is a part of myself in my body, you know, um, which is strange. It's like, we have these different kind of like control systems in our own selves, <laughs> you know, our higher yeah. selves, our egos. And I literally, um, it's like, I think it's just, it just kind of showed me like, being on the plant medicine is a very intense example, but, it, but now in this energy, it just happens like this, you know, potentially every day where this, I don't know. It's like, you're coming into like this, coming into this new vibration, you know, maybe lack of better words, higher vibration coming into this evolution. It's like, it's, it is so beautiful, but it's like, there's this part of you, this old, there's old parts of you that they literally have to basically die and be reborn. And it's, it's, it's so uncomfortable. I don't think there's like, you know, it's like, you just have to kind of trust it and sit with it because it's like, it literally has to basically relinquish control that it's had. It doesn't want to, there's a part of us that I think doesn't want to relinquish that control, but it seems like as soon as we do, you know, we're just kind of moved around in like this divine way. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it made me think it made me think about what you said earlier like flow like water and um that yeah it's very true that's a very difficult it's a very difficult thing to go through because just as attached as those parts are to like our essence I think it's very easy to become attached to parts of ourselves because you know which is the power in what you said earlier about being present and being grounded because in the present moment you know you're you're really aligned with like the eternal truth, which is separate and, and, you know, stands alone without, without needing to lean on anything. But the ego is always leaning because it can't really support itself. It can't stand up right. It needs to lean on something. And, but I feel like sometimes it's like you get attached to that. You get attached to those parts of yourself in my experience. And so sometimes it's like very hard to accept when it's time to let something go within ourselves maybe it's like a way that we approach situations even or like relationships with other people or how we operate in relationships it can be hard because there's all these stories but that's the power in being present because that true presence like all the stories kind of just fall away in that moment yeah that also made me just kind of have to like marinate in that for a second and remember what I was going to say, what you made me think of. Well, maybe we should just like take a minute. <laughs> we'll see if it comes back. No pressure. Right. I feel, like it was, right. I feel like it was good. So I'm like, I'm willing to wait. <laughs> oh my God. You're so awesome. What were you? What, what what did you say again? I'm sorry. I don't know why. I'm like I this. feel like what I feel like it probably sparked something in you is when I said the ego is always leaning because it can't stand up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. I remember. Yeah. It reminds me of the, you know, speaking of that experience I was just sharing, like part of what that was like was like, I actually had a vision that it was like my ego was standing there with like a checkboard because like the, the, the ego needs something to lean on. And I think it's so powerful because it, it's like that survival mode. Like that ego is so afraid of the, it's like that ego actually has to die. But the thing it fears most is the death because all it's there for is to try to stay alive really. And, and it needs to be like, it, it seeks things that will like validate basically um, and strengthen it, which is the stories, the separation, the survival narratives that we have. Um, so it was like this vision where, you know, the whole time I was like, am I okay? Am I okay? I was so, cause I was like, I had all this fear. I didn't even realize I had this fear. And it was like, my ego was like, kept scanning my energy, basically being like with a clipboard and like, and like checking off, like still alive, still breathing, still, um, mm -hmm. you know, can feel my body, like just constantly like checking in, like, am I alive? Am I alive? Am I alive? And then there was like this moment where it was finally, re it was like, there's just, I couldn't control it even if I wanted to. I was like, I was just ready to let go of that control. And like that whole part of me basically like literally died. And it was like, eh, like it was like, it was like, oh my God, like coming into this higher energy. It's like, what is this? It's like, ah, you know what I mean? It's so, I don't know what the word is. It's like, the it, it is very contrasting. I think that's why it is so uncomfortable, but it's, you know, it is an experience I'm so grateful for because that's how we release these parts. It's like these parts that they used to serve as a purpose, you know, of, of keeping us safe, of protecting us. And then as we continue to evolve, there comes a point where it's like basically that service is no longer helping. It's actually hindering, you know, and then that's mm -hmm. when we kind of go about that, you know, hopefully compassionate, um, transformation of that relationship within our own selves that's such a powerful visual because it's like i could see that so clearly you know not not in the way that you saw that but just i could imagine that in my own way like this this part that just wants to consistently like is everything good am i good you know and it's interesting because it almost made me think of codependence in a weird way and like you know we often hear about that in the context of like how one person relates to another but you know maybe that's possible that we could have codependent relationships within those parts with those parts of ourselves and it's like but I need you in order to live but that's you know that's illusion because as you said for you that part of you died but you're still here you know what I mean but it's like there's like this illusion of like without you I won't be able to keep going like you're keeping this thing afloat but None of those parts are actually the thing keeping us afloat. Yeah. And that's such a, I think that's such a great example. At least it has been for me because, you know, obviously again, that's like a, it's a plant medicine ceremony. So you're going into it, you know, it's going to be very, very intense. I mean, you're taking, you know, a, a plant that's going to, um, you know, hallucinate, make you like not hallucinate, but, you know, really see things, but it also kind of shows like we're, um, we're always going through that process though, you know, even whether it's that intense or it's more subtle, it's like, it's especially on this kind of like conscious ascension path, you know, or whatever you want to call it. It's like, like clearly we are always going through that process, you know, it's, so it makes sense why sometimes some days, some moments can be that uncomfortable, you know, it's just like, because the same thing is happening essentially. It's just like our, our level of awareness isn't always to the point where we're visualizing it or like seeing it in such a clear way, but we're feeling it. Exactly. Yeah. How, how do you conceptualize like the shadow versus the ego or is it a versus, you know, in your understanding? I feel like that's tricky for me. Like, how do I know a shadow versus ego? Is there a difference or is it just a different way of describing the same thing? Yeah, that's, that's an important question. And I think it honestly is just one of those things where it kind of depends on, you know, people's own verbiage of how they see it or how they, you know, have been taught, you know, that versus the word. But I think for me, it's, 
it's almost synonymous in a way because it's kind of you know to me the shadow is just you know again that maybe that part of you i guess technically the shadow is you know the shadow being the part parts of yourself that you can't see you can't perceive them they're unconscious to you so they're basically hidden they're like a mystery and so like that's one of the reasons that you know we we have so much fear around them so i guess maybe the shadow is a little bit more of an expansive definition than like even the ego people have so many different uh, ways to interpret the ego but to me i think the ego is especially um like the the part of ourselves that thinks it is separate from god basically mm. Mm. I love this conversation. <laughs> Me too. This is like the bread. This is like my bread and butter. <laughs> like, let's talk about the shadow. <laughs> As a Scorpio, I'm also like, yes, death and rebirth. I love it. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm not an expert by any means, but I know that that Carl Jung was a big, a big voice in like illuminating our modern day understanding of the shadow and like, like you, this quote you shared of like making the unconscious conscious. And it's like interesting because, and, and you keep mentioning this, like the light coming, the lights coming on or the light kind of intensifying. And it's like, I've found for myself over time, it's like, I'll start to be able to see certain parts of my shadow. And that's really trippy because it's like, Oh, you know, like actually seeing your shadow can be very jarring or like that part, part of yourself becomes almost like, it's like, for me, it feels like it comes online and it's more, uh oh, you there? I'm there. I'm going to switch my camera. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't know if it was like eating you and I was like, no, please. I know. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> I know. Right. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, I've experienced this feeling of like, I don't know, like parts of my shadow come online and I'm like, it's no longer, but it's so cool too, because then I'm like, I see the projections that I've had. And like, it's one thing I, I think about all the time. And I don't know who originally said this, but the sentiment of like, you don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are. And I think about that all the time. So when those parts of my shadow come online, I'm like, oh, that's why I always like assume that someone might be like, I don't know, jaded. Because I have a part of me that's really jaded. So I'm like, I'm projecting that onto other people. So when I see it, it's kind of like cool, but also like yikes and also just like very jarring. Yeah, jarring is definitely the word. Um, And even it's interesting, too, because it's like seeing the new parts of the shadow but even seeing the new parts of your light is even jarring because it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, that's me. Like, it's like, I could, it's like the whole process of that evolution is, is, it is jarring. I think and many times it's like, wow, you know, it, it's these kind of experiences that again, we kind of just have to continue to integrate. You know, I think that's really the, where the tricky part is, you know, we can have this knowing and have this like vision or these understandings. But then it's like the hard part is like integrating it into like your daily life. You know, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, I guess, again, coming back to being present and starting to kind of, I think that's the best way to do it, honestly, is just to observe when you, because it's like that, just observing it has so much, you know, in the transmutation, just being able to observe when you're starting to see, you know, maybe these qualities that you're you know, or behaviors or things you didn't even see before that maybe you've been doing, you know, for years or your whole life. It's like, what? (laughs) Yeah. But I love that you brought in what I've heard uh, described as like the exalted shadow, which is like the, the things where like, usually people do it with celebrities a lot where they like idolize them because they don't see those qualities as possible within themselves. But you know, in your own way, everyone has that star quality. It may not be in like a traditional sense, but everybody has that for them in a different way. And it is interesting because I think we're oddly enough, 
I feel like I've received conditioning where like you're supposed to silence that almost more than like what we would consider like the darker aspects of the shadow. Like it's almost viewed as more taboo to be like, I have this amazing ability within me. Like I have these amazing, you know, capabilities and to be like, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> like that's more socially acceptable. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think hopefully like I'm starting to see less of that, but yeah, like the glorification of like, kind of like the victim mentality or like being a victim. And again, it's like all these things though, again, in individually and collectively, it's just like, I think it, it's all just part of the process. You know, it's all like right as it needs to be because it's unfolding. So, I mean, I think that's another tip, you know, of just reminding ourselves that um, it's just messy. You know, it just can feel very messy. It's not so like linear It's or cut and dry. It's like, that's evolution that is the evolution itself is that experimentation you know and sometimes it doesn't it feels like a failure but it's like really it's just like you had to learn that you know that was what you had to see to continue to kind of go upon your you know sacred path that you're on yeah i love that i think like a big thing that's crystallizing for me in this conversation is like the importance of allowance like allowing things to be what they are <laughs> you know instead of like putting up this war and like this fight like oh no like you know this part of me I don't like it it's just like mm, what can I learn you know like you said having that conversation with those parts of ourselves like what are you trying to tell me you know like what are you doing here like what is your because everything has a function everything has a purpose so it's like even even if we're choosing to transcend you know, it's like, I don't necessarily want to continue doing this. I'm going to transcend it. I have that intention of like transmuting this. But first, I want to understand where it came from to begin with. Just like having that sort of, you know, flow versus like this kind of like tension and all of that, which just, it almost just stagnates the inevitable. Yeah, allowing really is the word. And like, even like a, a softening, like that's what it feels like to me too. It's like a softening into it of like, instead of just like, cause I really, that I think that is what it really comes down to is that ego, which is often, again, that's, it is our shadow a lot of times cause it's not conscious. We don't even realize it. We don't even realize we're trying to control, you know, it's like you could sit there and be present and have a meditation and then go about your day and like, you'll notice, you know, at some point you'll, you know, there's something will happen and you'll be like, you know, you might want to clench up with that control. And again, like having so much compassion for yourself because that's literally why we're here. It's so, it's literally just the natural process of like a baby learning to walk. You fall, you get back up again, you fall. And eventually, you know, you, you will walk. Um, so yeah, I think that is so important. <laughs> you can't have too much grace and compassion with yourself through because the, the amount of courage and bravery it takes to walk on this journey, you know, you got to remember that is like huge. You know, that's a lot of people, um, you know, it's like it's very scary to even think about starting to, to walk face on with your eyes open. You know, that alone takes so much courage. So I think that is something we have to give ourselves credit for on this path. Yeah, I feel so grateful that you, you know, brought that that in because like the compassion piece, like what what is any of this without love? You know, it's all pointless. Like if you if you're like, I'm going to evolve and be the best, whatever. But there's no love. Like it's just kind of just kind of flat. And wow. it's just no fun. It's no fun either. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and it, it is true. It, it is like. It is like this thing of, I don't know. I feel like for me, one thing I fall into is comparison. And it's like, sometimes it's easier for me to see how, to see that, like the honor in it in someone else's life. I'm like, wow, it's so awesome that they did that. But then like completely discredit the areas of my life where I'm doing similar things or um, whatever, just like being really hard on myself as if like, how do I know when? I've actually given it my all. <laughs> and like, when is it enough? It's like, you know, I think a pretty common 
human feeling, but it can trip me up sometimes. Yeah, me too. Definitely. That's, you know, that is a pattern that I feel myself, you know, it's so crazy. And we know, you know, we know the truth of like, you know, we can't compare ourselves to anyone, but just kind of those like conditions. I think that's where the tricky stuff really is, is the mind. But you said something so profound with like the compassion, you know, isn't it just about, oh, we need to evolve. It's all, it really is all about the love. And so you just made me realize like, it's not like we just need to have compassion for ourselves in this process. It's like even the, the compassion itself, I feel like that is the process. Cause it's like, mm. how can you allow that love in to all of these like little crevices within yourself that haven't seen the, probably haven't seen love, you know, in a very long time. It's like, so it's like, even that it's almost like part of, it's like, I feel like it's part of the training. It's like having such immense compassion and love like that itself is the awakening. Wow. <laughs> Genuinely speechless in this moment. Like, yeah, that's profound. Genuinely. And it, and it's like, it just resonates so deeply that I just know that that's true. <laughs> like, on a soul level, I'm like, there's no, that's just true. And I feel like it's so, like you mentioned just now, too. It's the mind that just like starts making up all these ideas like, oh, it's about hitting this mark or hitting this goal or, you know, whatever. Or when I can do this thing, then that means, you know, all those stories. But like the true feat, I think, in the true place of like ultimate growth, but also just like the real fulfillment comes from the love and just being like, you know, there's no, there's no need to perform for love. Like it just is. And it's always there, but like, it's like you said, like letting that in, like letting the love in is the thing that we sometimes struggle with because the love is always there, but we're like, we're like, no, I can't, I can't, if I, I don't know, sometimes I have this story of like, if I let up, then like, I'll never do the things that I have in my mind to do. I don't know if you relate to that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's like, one of my worst fears is um being like a hamster on a wheel and then there's so many ways I find myself doing that and like with that like that's a perfect example of like yeah I don't want to let up let me just do this let me just do this let me just and then finally I get so wore out that I'm like Jesus take the wheel like please <laughs> like I can't do this anymore <laughs> and then that's when the magic happens it's like okay remember that try to remember that next time <laughs> That's so funny because I just imagine a little hamster like, <laughs> like falling on its little side. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it, <laughs> yeah, I love, I love that though. Cause like, I feel like so many important things have come through just about, as you're saying, like the importance of allowing and flow and just like reducing resistance, because I think that's another way of reducing resistance is recognizing the places where we're just running ourselves ragged. And, you know, because of this, like, incessant ego need to, like, prove ourselves. And it's, like, understandable and very human. But it takes, and it just speaks to the level of, like, wisdom to know, like, all right, I, I did too much. Like, I, I got to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the beautiful thing is you can always come back to the present moment, you know. And, and when those the mental stuff is really messing you up, it's, like, we talked about in the last episode of like being present just long enough. It will be hard at first to let that all that momentum that your thoughts got to going. There is a momentum. So it's like it might take a little bit, maybe a day or two even to to be present enough to where that momentum kind of comes to a more like stillness. And then you're you're it's like you're really free. You know, you feel really free in that moment because it's like that's when you come back to this place where you can, I think, use your mind you know and not be used by your mind because i really think the mind is the most like the feelings and the feelings can be painful and, and hurt you know but it's like i think the mind is the true place where like that's like a, that that can be like a torture chamber you know if we're not like a, aware of like what's going on in here <laughs> yeah that i wish that wasn't as true as it is it's like <laughs> the mind can just really because it it, it won't stop. 
like it won't stop sometimes. So like it really does require that like as we talked about a lot, like that coming into the body, coming into the heart, or you know, not or, but also coming, you know, into the observer role versus like the mind itself and being like, all right, now I need to like observe what's going on versus like identifying with it. It's just such a practice, but yeah, I love the realness of it. It's like, this is, it's hard. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It's hard. It's, it's like something that I think it's supposed to be. It's like training or Mm -hmm. something. Exactly. You just said it. I didn't know how to say it, but that is exactly it is. And it, that's the thing about it is it, it is kind of supposed to be hard, I think, like not in a way of like punishing us, but in a way of really just like, because it's giving us what we really want and what we really need, you know, on open, honestly, that's what that transformation is. And I think we know it deep down, but to be authentic about it and to share is, I think, so important because there's a lot, a lot of that I think in authenticity where like, you know, if people, and I, I see this actually kind of going away right now, like people trying to, you know, consciously or unconsciously kind of go into that guru um, role where it's like, you know, I have all the answers, you know, come with me. I never, you know, I don't, I don't suffer. Or like, I don't, it's not that hard for me. It's like, it is like we're all in the same boat here. I think it's important to wow. be honest about that. You know, it's like we all I feel like, you know, that's just how what I've come to find, you know, even having seen people like that. And, um, you know, obviously there's no judgment. It's just like we're all in the same boat, though. You know, you can't kind of I feel like it's like it's it's way more of a, a service to people to be honest about it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of power in authenticity. And, like, it's not that people have to, like, tell every single detail of their lives. But I think when we're more honest with each other, like, just human to human, just, like, yeah, I have a hard time. This is what I do, though, to help. What do you do? And it's, like, that that sentiment of, like, walking each other home. And it's just coming back to more of a sense of community versus competition, I think, is vital. Kind of, like, I think this competitive thing is something, like, that's, like, the collective shadow where there's this idea that we're like competing with each other and like that's what we're supposed to do instead of collaborate but we're all much healthier and happier or even just like it just feels better (laughs) when we're like collaborative it just feels more natural yeah that's a really yeah definitely because that and that's that kind of ego you know it's just that ego energy is like that scarcity you need to compete there's not enough you know and, it, and there is enough when it comes to God and love and our purpose, our uniqueness, our originality, every single one of us. It's like, that's abundance. I mean, we are, you know, sometimes we cut ourselves off again, because it's just a program maybe we picked up in our, in our trauma, but it's like, we're all connected to that. You know, I think, I mean, I think that's the, the ascension of what it really is too, is it's coming back to God's source fully and then that's why it's like relinquishing all this you know just naturally with like the third dimension it's like naturally we have all these attachments to you know the ego and to like all these things that um we think we need it's like the shift from like the 3d to 5d consciousness it's just inherently to to be here incarnated living it out you know it can be hard it's just it's intense because you're literally shifting like you know, you're literally basically inhabiting like a very intense alchemical process and there's no way around it. And I think the more that we try to pretend that it's, um, you know, so clean and easy all the time, it's like, it's, that's kind of like a denial of like the truth, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, have you seen the collective shadow? I mean, come on. It's literally horrifying. Like, You can't tell me that it's like, you know what I mean? But it's like, we got to be honest about that. Otherwise, we're lying to ourselves, you know, at least in in my perspective. It made me think, and I I don't know if this is true, but what came in my head is like, when you said that about the collective shadow, is like, there's two ways that I feel that it becomes visible. And it's either that it gets darker or or like the light shines on it. And I think they're not necessarily um, antithetical. I think that it can happen 
that the light is shining brighter, so it's getting darker. But I think also sometimes in terms of the collective shadow, it's like sometimes the more people who are like doing a certain thing, the more obvious it gets. And sometimes that's why. Or sometimes it's just like so much light is being shown that things that were in the dark are brought to the light is what came through for me. Absolutely. That's a really interesting point. Yeah. And even with like these systems, even with like um, systems of control, whether, whether it's your own ego or whether it's like our government or like these um, groups of people that try to control humanity, it's like, it just, yeah, it, it shows all of that. And it's also like, it's like, it's almost, that's literally just like a, like what we're seeing in the world. I feel like it's literally just almost like a, a macro of what we're feeling in the micro where like those forces, those very egoic um, forces, it's like, they're losing control. So it's like, they're really desperate to try to like clamp onto that control. But it's like, it just makes it even more obvious, I think, to a lot of people of like, oh, this is what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's so much here. I understand how Carl Jung spent so much time like really diving into this this concept and like this understanding because I feel like there's levels to it that I feel like if we just kept going, they would just start opening up and we would be like, what? How are we <laughs> just like downloads coming through? But I, I love this conversation because it is so important it's almost, you know, like that hermetic principle as within, so without. It's like when you see something happening, you can kind of always find some kind of correlation within yourself. And being able to say like, because it almost like is empowering too. like, what, in what way am I doing this that I can shift instead of just feeling like powerless all the time? Like the world around me is just like this. When we can recognize like the way that it's a mirror and the ways, it's not always that we're doing those things. But just like when we can, it's almost like empowering, like, oh, that's something that's inside of me that I can like actually address and look at versus feeling like there's nothing you can do. Yeah, and that's how we take our power back. You know, that really is how we take our power back. And I think that's another illusion of like feeling helpless. You know, it's like, oh, I'm only one person, but it's like, it's it can be yeah it is kind of very much an illusion in that way because you, you know we are we have so much power within us and it's like it is like that is i think how we the con the contrast of that what we see it can really we can instead of being like overwhelmed by it it's like we can see it and be like you know how can i live my life you know in a way that reflects the qualities that i want to see like be the change you wish to see in the world like that is the truth you know and that i feel like when when there's enough people doing that together which is kind of already starting to happen and it, it, it definitely is starting to happen actually you can see it um we start to see like really incredible shifts i think it's just the beginning of that but we are starting to see that i love that because i feel like it it brings because like you know i get very interested in psychology right like what motivates us what drives us and I think, you know, a lot of psychologists have boiled it down to like what motivates us is things that bring us pleasure and what we're averse to is things that bring us pain. So like usually the idea of embracing the shadow seems painful. But when you have that framework, like you're saying, like you're you're helping change the world by embracing your shadow and bringing light to these things. It adds that motivational factor where I feel like it can become more there. It increases the ability to be like, yeah. I can do I can do this because there's a benefit versus like this just is hard and I don't like looking at the shadow. But like when we when we bring in that aspect of like the positives of embracing the shadow, it's almost like motivating. Like I'm starting to get amped up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of a quote that <clears throat> Nietzsche quote, a man with a why can bear anyhow. Mm, it's like that's a good one. Yeah. Like when you have that, like what you just said, it, it is motivating and that's the best way to see it. And I feel like mostly like, yeah, that that's because, and then that's also the reminder of the truth, you know, with like all this contrast, I think we can kind of like sometimes, and again, this is just part of the process. Maybe get sucked into it. Like, oh my God, this is horrible. But kind of having that heart centered approach, remembering that contrast is literally just 
basically reflecting to you like maybe a choice that you can make you know what i mean that's good can you say more about the contrast yeah and, and i've been thinking about it a lot as far as creators i mean we are creator beings and we are creating from within us you know um and again individually and collectively so when we see contrast i always at least try to remind myself more and more um you know it's we don't we're not victims to it we don't need to be victims to it so even when you see something whether it's in your own life or even if it is in the collective you can plant a seed you know it's like you, you see i don't know an example maybe people being violent you know i think generally we oh i didn't know if i was still here generally we have like a knee-jerk reaction to be like oh my god this is horrible like this earth is horrible it's everything's going and we don't realize like we're kind of like just perpetuating that with our with our thoughts but as creator beings we do have the ability to see that and feel that contrast but also be like you know set this like intention plant this seed within our within ourselves of like yeah, like I see that and, you know, I want to plant the seed for, for more harmony, for less violence. Like I want more, I want to see more people getting along. I want to see more people like resolving their difference. Um, and you really can do that, you know, with a collective, obviously it's a way bigger like mass. So it maybe it's not going to be instant, but I can tell you that I, I've done, when I've done that, I always see something, you know, I will see something that affirms it in my reality because, but we just don't think to do that. I think a lot of times, whether it's our own personal lives, oh, you know, this is happening, you know, okay, well, I don't want that. When you know what you don't want, then you know what you do want. It's like, it also works in the collective, I think. Um, but again, we have that kind of knee-jerk reaction to just kind of be like victims about it. But I think that as more people start to, plant their intentions for what they want to see, you know, in the world, in the collective, for love, for harmony, for truth. And we are already, again, starting to see that. Like, I think that is going to be a monumental shift as well. Yeah, I think, I think that's, again, like such a motivating thing to, to look to and remember, because it can feel so disheartening. You know, when the awareness increases, it can feel kind of like, almost like this dis disillusionment follows because it's like oh my gosh it's overwhelming and you know it made me think back to what you talked about earlier with abundance right like there's an abundance of like infinite possibilities in this world in reality and what we see often is that what's happening as you mentioned there's that power to choose what seeds we water what tends to happen though is most people cho choose to water those seeds of like violence or like hate or whatever and um it can be overwhelming to see how many seeds are being watered in that vein of what's possible and it makes me think about something um someone described like the the lack of abundance you know because it can nev never actually be lack as just something you're not in a healthy relationship with so there's so much power in in strengthening those relationships on in this world with like things that we do want and i think sometimes there can be this like whispering where people are like how can you you know sit there and like sing a song when like all these terrible things are happening but when we view it as like almost our way of serving like i'm adding something that can maybe like help shift in so even if in a small way and there's so much power in that but i feel like it can almost feel wrong at times like how could i do this in light of like all these other things happening has that ever come up for you yeah, I think that's a really good point. Actually, I love this because it's something I've been thinking about recently of like, again, like it, like either way, but speaking for like the collective right now, you know, we're, we're coming out of like, there's so many different ways, you know, there's honestly infinite different ways even just to perceive this shift that we're all, you know, experiencing now um, on earth. But like these systems of control and fear and slavery that we've been in that are you know all just being totally revealed right now it's like something that's so important that's really been coming to me lately is that reminder that we can't like resolve those systems the same way that they were created which again is the hatred is the fear is the divide is all of this stuff like anytime we're playing in that, it's like we're kind of contributing to that whole system of like the victim, like being the victim on a conscious level, even because it's like the consciousness 
is what's creating it like physically it's mind control ultimately really is what it's vibrational control is what what we've been in and you know what many of us are here now to kind of walk ourselves out of and walk each other home out of is that third dimension i think that's really what it is it's just like it, it's just like that lower dimensional system that we're coming out of um but yeah so it's like so when you see it from that perspective it's like you know on one hand it is important to be of course like aware of the shadow and in this case even aware of like the evil and like the iniquity that goes on um which is kind of a whole other topic in itself but 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 leading but leading like leading ourselves and humanity with this higher love and this creativity and like these gifts that we have to me that's the best service we can actually give not playing in like the fear-mongering um rat race i mean to me that's like more and more it's like that itself is kind of like a hamster wheel so it's like you know coming at the problem with like a whole new resolution i think that's what has to happen really yeah as you were talking the image that came to my mind was like when you see the tree roots breaking through like the, the concrete sidewalk where it's just like the natural growth and evolution of that tree breaks through like the man-made construct that you know, we, we view as like beneficial or evolved, right? But sometimes those things are stifling or they're not what is in our highest good. But inevitably, the things of nature tend to break through that illusion. And so I don't know, that's what, what I thought of when you were saying that, but I think it, it I think it's true. I think it's just, um, I think most of the time, people who, who maybe have like um, an issue with people bringing in that light or that beauty are sometimes people who are still kind of stuck in a state where they don't see the levels to it. Like they might just view it as like, I don't know, like the best way to go about it is like this, like you have to go in the street and like yell and like do that. And this other person's like, you don't understand, like I'm protesting too but just like in this way. It's not that I'm okay with what's happening, but I see it as more beneficial to create some something different energetically versus like bouncing off that energy or feeding into that energy. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, we all have different roles to play. And even that, you know, as being like, you know, being on that end of it, um, you know, again, comes back to just like really owning and trusting our own voice and, even if it um, causes reactions like that in other people, like, you know, not taking it out on yourself or them, but just realizing like you're triggering them, like in that example, like but then being triggered by like your light or your, you know, your joy or your connection is even though they're not happy about it, like it's actually doing them a favor in a weird way because anytime we're triggered like that, it's like, whether we want to or not, it's bringing up something like, again, it's bringing up the shadow. It's bringing up something that, you know, isn't being seen, whether they see it that way yet or not. It's like, it's causing it an activation in them. So even then it's like, it's a blessing, I think. Cause it's like you, it's that breaking out of like these boxes, these molds of like how it can be done, you know, especially with the Aquarian energy, like the visionary, like, um, you know, being innovative, doing things differently. I think that really is like, what a lot of us are going to be doing in our own way it's almost unimaginable it, to me it's it's already unrecognizable like what we're seeing right now but it's like i think it's gonna be more so with what we're bringing forward i love that i love that perspective i think that's a great note to end on but i do always love asking if you have any final thoughts <sighs> <laughs> i think you just go on and on yeah it's so beautiful um, just thank you so much, Bianca. I'm so grateful for you and for everyone listening. You know, as always, we send so much love. And on your journey, you know, I'd say like the biggest thing is continuing to come back into yourself, into your heart, into your answers, and um, trusting that because we really do always have what we need within us. Beautifully said. And as always, so much gratitude right back to you and to anyone listening. We're so appreciative. Like it's like we get to hang out and like you get to hang out with us. And it's just, it's just lovely. 
Um, but on that note, this has been a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. I'm Bianca. I'm Regan. And we will catch you guys on the next one.